Hello, friends. So, Bible study, uh, the Niv, Acts, uh, chapter 28. We're going to do 1 through 31, which is the rest of uh, chapter 28. And with that, we are closing out the book of Acts. Uh, tomorrow, we will start Romans. Okay, so... Uh, previous to this, Paul is supposed to go see the emperor. He asked to see the emperor. He could be a free person, but he's under protection because the Romans know that the Jewish uh, synagogue wants, in Jerusalem wants to kill him. So, um, they, uh, they put him on a ship and he told them not to sail from Crete. They didn't listen to him. Again, I feel like this is a faded moment because normally you would want to listen to the people with the expertise in the thing that you're trying to do. So they listened to the experts and not, you know, the prophet, essentially. Or, I mean, he's, he's an apostle, but he has abilities. And the creator tells him what's going to happen before it happens. And uh, as one gets closer and closer to creator, you gain those sorts of abilities. Because remember, the apostles are supposed to be an example of what we can be when we have enough faith. They're not supposed to be like, no, we're above you and you cannot. That's not the point of them. The point of them is not to, rem to remind you of your place uh, beneath other humans. It's to remind you that you can achieve what they have achieved when you have enough faith. Okay? I mean, that's really the point. Because that's the difference between us and, and them. And they're, you know... For the, even them in their time frame. Okay. So ashore on Malta. 28 verse 1. Once safely on shore. Because there was a hurricane. Remember? And they got thrown all off. And they had to get through the boat out. You can go watch yesterday's video. If you want to catch up. Okay. We found out that the island was called Malta. Because they had no idea where they were. The hurricane blew them all over the place. The islanders showed us unusual kindness it's just very sad that that's they expect people to be mean by default they built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold i would hope that's what everybody that would be my reaction too did you just get shipwrecked here we gotta get you warm you're gonna oh you're gonna catch your death come on Paul gathered a pile of brushwood. Oh, see, so he's putting in the work. And he put it on the fire. A viper was driven out by the heat. Ooh, drawn to the heat, yeah, because they remember they're cold-blooded. So it's cold and rainy there. They're like, ooh, warmth. Uh, fastened itself onto its hand. Oh, onto his hand. Yeah, so it bit him on the hand. When the islanders saw that the the snake hanging from his hand they said to each other this man must be a murderer for though he escaped from the sea just justice has not allowed him to live because viper is very poisonous and they see the, the poisonous snake handing off of them so you know they different culture different belief structure right but paul shook the snake into the fire and suffered no ill effects so he they're expecting him to die and nothing happened the people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead but after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happening to him they changed their minds and said he was a god you don't die from a viper bite right? who are you you must be something exceptional because again Different cultures, different time frames, different learnings, you know. Uh, there was an estate nearby that belonged to Publis, the chief official of the island. Because, you know, the Romans were all over the place, so they had people in charge all over the place, living in houses and stuff. They weren't necessarily there to make the people better. They were there because there were resources that they wanted to extract. It doesn't mean they involved the people at all, or the people could have been forced into slave labor, or any other name, number of things. They could have paid the workforce, because it depends on what emperor 
and what time frame in history and what people. Most often they made deals with the people who were the kings. They had the officials marry, uh, you know, like a daughter or the queen or if, if they've killed the king or any of the rest of that stuff. Okay. And then that justifies to the people where they have to follow them. Sometimes they make those, they made the deals with the kings where the, you, you can still live in the lap of luxury, but you have to let us, you know, enslave your people or pay them cheaply or, you know, whatever it's going to be. He welcomed us to his home and for three days entertained us, uh, you know, with hospitality. His father was sick in bed, suffering with a fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and after a prayer, he placed his hands on him and he healed them. When this happened, the rest of the sick on the island came and were cured. They honored us in many ways. And when we were ready to sail, they furnished us with all the supplies we need. So bad. It would have just been further reinforcing the idea that he's a god. Um, because not only does he not die from a viper bite, but, right? But he can heal people who are sick too. So just imagine what it must have looked like to them. I bet Paul looked a little bit like the Messiah. But remember, he can only do what he can do because of the Messiah. Because the Holy Spirit works through him. And because he calls on Jesus' name. Without Jesus, Paul can't do any of these things. Without Jesus, Paul is a murderer. Because the islanders were, islanders were correct. It's just that he turned his life around. Because there's nothing God loves more than the underdog and a good comeback story. There's stuff in the Old Testament where he's like, we're going to go up against them. We have like, you know, five times the warriors that they do. No, no, no. That's too easy. We're going to start sending people home. I want the number to be small enough so all of you remember it's me and not you. So that's what he likes to do. He likes to make miracles out of people. Next section here is called Arrival at Rome. Uh, it's verse 11. After three months, we put out to sea in a ship that had wintered in the island. It was an Alexandrian ship with a figurehead of the twin gods, Castor and Pollux. We put uh, in at Syracuse and stayed there for three days. From there we set sail and arrived at Regium. The next day the south wind came up and on the following day we reached, uh, I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce this right, but I'm going to say, uh, it says P-U-T-E-O-L-I, Putoli, Putoli, uh, there we found some brothers who invited us to spend a week with them. And so we came to Rome. The brothers there heard that we were coming. And they traveled as far as the Forum of Apius and the three taverns to meet us. At the sight of these men, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. When he got to Rome... Paul was allowed to live by himself with a soldier to guard him. Because remember, he hasn't done anything illegal in the arms of the Romans. And he's far from Jerusalem. So they're like, well, let's just give him one guard. We don't need to keep paying for this guy's, you know, three square meals and a bed every night. Let him pay for his own stuff and we'll just provide him with a guard. Because we know that there's an imminent threat. So we'll guard him. So like, act like the police, right? Paul preaches at Rome under guard. Uh, verse 17. Three days later, he called together the leader of the Jews. When they had assembled, Paul said to them, My brothers, although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. They examined me and wanted to release me because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar. Not only 
or not that I had any charges to bring against my own people. Okay, not that I had, because I, I wouldn't have spoken there, not that I had any charges to bring against my own people. For this reason, I had asked to see and talk with you. It is because of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. Okay, so he's calling the people together to remind them that he hasn't committed any crime. Because remember, in their world, what they are supposed to do is actively seek their Messiah. Sorry, I had to pause there for a second. That was my, uh, my Alexa giving me a reminder. Uh, to to uh, check on something for my plant babies. Because remember, plants are the new pets. And pets are the new children. This is from a meme on the internet, so don't come for me. And children are like the new exotic animal. You kind of have to be a little bit crazy and really rich to afford them. It's just supposed to be a joke. I know that my delivery is not so fantastic. But for me, my plants are my children and, you know, my pets at the moment because I don't have any of those things. Uh, now, so remember that they're supposed to actively seek their Messiah, right? So he's doing what he's supposed to do. So they, in their, it's like just like when you had John the Baptist out there who was not claiming to be the Messiah. So they did not try to have him killed. They didn't have him arrested or anything. Like, he might have been arrested and released a bunch of times with warnings. or But they, they weren't trying to kill him. He was killed because of Herod. Not because of the Sanhedrin or the Pharisees. And they weren't trying to arrest his followers out there in the desert. They were just like, ah, oh, those crazy people in the desert. Because they're supposed to actively seek their Messiah. And the Messiah is going to be like that. He's going to pop up out of nowhere. I mean, that's exactly what the prophets tell them is going to happen. So they're expecting that. And most people are just waiting to see if it's true. And that's kind of how people still are today. They're waiting to see. But they don't want to invest too much in any one religion. Because they want to say, wait to see what's true. See, that's in us already. That's part of the door that's open for the opposition to even get in. So he's supposed to seek his Messiah. And he's like, please don't try to kill me. It's basically what he's saying to these, uh, to the Jews that are in front of him. Because in his experience, it's usually the Jewish people that are trying to kill him and not so much the Gentiles. He had that one incident there with the Artemis people, but mostly not. Usually it's his own people. So verse 21, they replied, we have not received any letters from Judea concerning you. And none of the brothers who have come from there has reported or said anything bad about you. But we want to hear what your views are. For we know that people everywhere are talking against this sect. So they're like, oh, you're part of that sect. You want to talk to us about that? We haven't actually heard anything about that sect, but I think we should listen to your words. But we haven't gotten anything from you. And that's because remember, what they were doing is plotting murder. They did not really want to bring charges because they can't justify killing him under the law. So they're not sending out messages to the rest of the synagogues going, hey, we're plotting something that's completely illegal in our religion because it's against the Ten Commandments, which is the religion that they are supposed to be following. So they're not going to do that. They can't expose their corruption and assume the other leaders in other synagogues. Because remember... The concept of Pope is not original. It's the high priest. Right? But each one of these other Jewish synagogues are other, like other parishes. They are not actually legally bound to follow that one person. That's the guy that's in charge of Jerusalem. Yes, the other synagogues in that country than in Jerusalem, in Israel, right? are going to tend to follow. But the moment you get out of Jerusalem, because Jerusalem is Israel at this point, Gilead does not have to follow the high priest. Damascus doesn't either. And certainly no, no synagogues in Rome have to. They get to decide for themselves. There is no pope. 
okay? The, our concepts in Christianity move forward. So think of them more like Protestants. There's a lot of different types of Protestants. They don't all follow one leader. They're not all going to, like, listen. They certainly don't feel like they have to listen to the Pope. They might, though. They at least listen to the words that he's got to say, but they're not necessarily going to change anything. If it feels like the message is coming from the Lord, though, they're going to be open to it. So this is the same mindset that these people are in. They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying. From morning till evening, he explained and declared to them the kingdom of God and tried to convince them about Jesus from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. They disagreed amongst themselves and begun to leave after Paul had made this final statement. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your forefathers when he said through Isaiah the prophet, go to this people and say, you will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing and never perceiving. For these, this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and in turn, I would heal them. Therefore, I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles and they will listen. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed who came to see him, all who came to see him. Boldly and without hindrance, he preached the kingdom of heaven and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, no weapon formed against him shall prosper. He finds a way to take every difficulty and still bring us to where we need to be. So let's remember as we go about the world today that one, all you can do is be a channel for the Holy Spirit and some people are going to welcome that and change and other people are not. You need to dust that off. Clear your conscience because you did everything you could because you can only do what he empowers you to do no matter how the, everybody else around you is perceiving that, as long as you're doing what he's empowered you to do and you're trying to leave the world a better place, then you're doing the best you can do with what is in front of you. And that's all anybody can do on any day. Smile. Because you're anchoring the light. No matter whose opinion around you might disagree, somebody out there needs to hear from you today because you are their light in the dark. That is what he does. And you just never really know how he needs to utilize you today until the day started. But if he's chosen you to anchor the light, then be grateful. Because that means you get to help somebody today. And that is a mighty big blessing.